Hi guys, I'm Isaac with Techie and welcome to this ADD quiz. I saw Jack Septic Guy, who is one of the YouTubers that I follow and have followed for a while, do this test. And this test and just ADD in general is kind of an important thing for me. It, probably because it has such a big impact on my life and just the things that I'm able to do in general. So I figured doing a video on doing a test which, at least according to the video that I saw of Jack, of Jack Septic Eye playing this, or doing it, which was reviewed by two actual specialists, will help kind of explain what ADD is, or ADHD, since those two kind of get thrown together. Um, because of course, you. I've heard people say, oh, I have ADD because of this or that, and it's really not that simple. Nor is it just something that you can just pass off as, like, oh, you're going to outgrow it, because somet sometimes you don't. I'm one of those people that is most likely never going to outgrow, outgrow ADD. And for those of you who don't know, uh, ADD is not some thing where it's like oh you just need to pay attention more or it's just you weren't or you weren't taught to, taught to focus right or something like that it's an actual chemical deficiency in the brain it's a deficiency of dopamine in the brain and so that's what the medication is for but i figured if doing this quiz and kind of explaining how it affects my life and how maybe you guys have noticed it in the video in the videos that I've done it might be able to help some of you guys are you totally ADD attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is somewhat difficult to diagnose why well for one thing the symptoms are common problems that everyone faces like I've mentioned before we are all are all forgetful, distracted, restless, overwhelmed, and losing track of things now and then. So what makes attention deficit slash hyperactivity disorder a disorder? What are the signs? Yes, do tell us. Oh. It's ongoing and impaired. Unlike being pregnant or being Belgian, ADHD is a matter of degree. When inattention, procrastination, overwhelm, and restlessness are constant frustrating problems that undermine many areas of your life, it's a disorder. Yeah, for example, for me, I am, if I'm not on the medications or the medication for my ADD, I am not very useful at all. I'm not able to get a bunch of stuff done. It's thoughts just disappear and reappear almost instantaneously and I lose track of so much shit. <laughs> no, this quiz has been approved by two independent ADHD specialists. It will give you a sense of whether or not you have this mindset, but it will not replace a proper assessment by a doctor who understands ADHD. This quiz is not intended to give you a definitive medical diagnosis, understand? Of course I understand! And now we wait for it to load. The first nine questions explore inattention and focus. Choose either yes or no. Of course, life is rarely black and white. If what we are describing happens to you regularly, regularly then select yes. If select no, if it's hardly ever or not at all. Does not give close attention to detail. Makes careless mistakes. Do you make small mistakes in your work? Do you skim read? Rush things? Hell yes. <laughs> I have an insanely fast reading speed, and this used to get me into so much fucking trouble in elementary and middle school, because I would have this really fast reading speed, and I could read the biggest books in almost no time at all. But then the problem that I had was that we had these... Uh, I don't know what you would call them, like reading comprehension tests that you had to pass and each book would give you a certain amount of points and by the end of that school year 
you had to acquire a certain amount of these points. And of course, the higher grade you were, the more you had to get. But for me, this was always a pain in the butt, being that I could never remember what the heck I read, even though I knew and it was physically proven that I actually had read the book. And so I did not do very well <laughs> in quite a few class English classes. Um, as far as out of school, I, I have so much trouble looking for stuff, I will miss it even if it's staring at me straight in the face. And that's not <laughs> an exaggeration. I actually get teased about that from my uh, parents quite a bit about that. Do you mess up dates or get numbers wrong? Fail to notice typos? Often overlook details in filling out forms or forget to add e attachments to emails? Do you make simple errors because you weren't paying attention? Yes. As I know I've mentioned before in prior videos, I have a really bad short-term memory. So, I don't know if that was just a thing before or just set aside from the ADD, but I have really bad short-term memory. I have to have stuff written down in front of me so I can't physically forget it. Unless, of course, I lose the paper or something. But So to have that there is a big help to me. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is in school, the difference between when I'm on the meds and not on the meds. Literally, the my writing style is completely different. The amount of notes I take is completely different. The notes I take when I'm off the meds is kind of illegible, but then I also have this mentality of, oh, I will totally remember this. I don't need to write this down at all. And then, of course, exactly what you think happens, I didn't remember. <laughs> So, yes, this happens quite a bit. Yes. Difficulty keeping your attention on task. Do you find it difficult to switch with, or to stick with things, even leisure activities? Do you get distracted perhaps going off to do something else, or you end up doing several things at once? Do you struggle following through on longer complex tasks? Perhaps shorter deadlines work better for you? Yes, this once again is a big problem with me. I get distracted super easily. I, my mind will just wander off on stuff. Like even when I'm editing videos, out, like for example, when I'm I, this will probably happen when I'm gonna edit this video. I will just randomly like, ooh, let's go. I wonder how this is doing, and I'll go on some random website and then forget for the next two hours what I was doing. Um, as far as leisure activities, yeah, sometimes it's really hard to to even relax in a way because I'm just too busy like, oh, let's go do this or let's go do that. Chores, which isn't really a leisure activity, but chores and homework and projects are a huge pain in the ass. My ADD is so bad that during school in college, I would not be where I am now if I didn't have those meds. I could not get any of the projects or any of the homework done that I had to without those meds. I, for example, one paper that I had to do was, it had to be about nine, ten pages long, double spaced. And in the pro or in the time that it would have taken me to do about four pages of stuff, so about maybe two hours or so, it took me about four hours to do three and a half paragraphs because I was getting just distracted as like heck. I couldn't get a single thought to stay in my head long enough to be able to write it down so I wouldn't lose the thought, it would drive me insane because then that the idea of I could only get homework and projects done within the 8 to 10 hour window that the meds worked while having a massive list of stuff to do was insanely stressful. So yes, this did, this still does bother me quite a bit.
doesn't appear to be listening when spoken to directly. Do you seem distracted during conversations? Do you tune out or zone out? You're looking right at someone, but you're lost in thought or distracted by video screen or other conversations. It depends. Uh, I've it's for this one. It's kind of hard for me to say if it's because of of um, ADD or not. Because, okay, so my mother was diagnosed with auditory dyslexia. And for me, I know I've always had a problem where I have to have stuff repeated to me. Not because I didn't hear you say something. It's because it just sounds like a garbled mess. And so I have to have it either written down so I can physically see what they're trying to say or I need to have it um, repeated a couple times so I can put it together because sometimes I can only physically put together about two or three words out of an entire sentence someone would say to me so if someone for example came out from behind me and would start and said like a sentence and walked off I would have had no fucking idea what they said at all even if they were within one foot of me and they, as they said it um, your mind wanders, often wanders, jumping around and missing what's being said. You end up apologize, end up apologizing. Sorry, I missed that. You may even lose track of what you're saying or go off on tangents. That I do a bit, quite a bit. I forget all the time what I'm talking about or what I was going to say. Um, I do sometimes go on tangents, though the thing I hate the most, though it's not quite related to this is I hate being cut off when I'm speaking and someone just completely butts in the conversation talks over me and then I have then I feel like I have to repeat what I was saying just so I could have gotten my point across and I've had this happen before where I've been cut off three four times in a row and then when I finally try to say something everyone gives me this look and this response of we already heard you the first time Ah, it's fucking infuriating. <laughs> Resonate? Yes. Doesn't follow instructions. Fails to finish. You don't bother to read instructions. You don't follow regular routines, even in getting ready for work. You struggle to stick to a schedule or a plan. Uh, I, I prefer instruction having instructions, because that way I know for sure this is what I have to do. Like, X, Y, and Z is what has to get done. Routines, I, I like having routines because it just makes it easier for me. Um, sticking to a schedule, though, like if there's a time element to it, that kind of makes it a bit harder because without the meds, yeah, it, it you get this feeling again of, oh, everything will be all right. And you don't have to worry about that. You prefer to get started rather than read through instructions, guides, or recipes. You're not being obstinate. You know what to do. You just don't do it. I guess that right there is part of the, you'll be fine. You don't have to worry about that. I don't know if that's an ADD thought, but that's what goes through my head every single time. I have to get something done, and I'm not on my meds. And that has gotten me into so much trouble in school and at work. Yes, this happens quite a bit. Difficulty organizing activities. Do you have trouble organizing your schedule at work, social events, or hobbies? Do you create a long to-do list that you then find overwhelming? Do you buy one agenda or organizing system after another, but don't follow them, or you lose track of them? Does planning a big project, even a fun vacation, seem daunting? Yes, sometimes. I'm a pretty, by nature, I'm a pretty organized guy. Like, for example, all the files on my computer, every single one of them, like pictures, videos, music, everything is named, organized, and put into folders. That even all of those are labeled and sometimes have subfolders within them. So, now I know exactly where to find them. So, 
not necessarily. Um, I guess it's the sticking to like a schedule that has nothing to do with like a computer, but like regular a chore list or homework list, a to-do list of just stuff that needs to get done. That would be kind of a bit harder to do. It's not a it's not impossible to do, it will just take longer. Sometimes considerably, sometimes not as not as or it won't it won't uh, be as quick as it would have been if you were on your meds. And it's not that it's not always that you're distracted as you're doing it. It's you don't have the uh, drive in a way. You don't have the drive and the uh, sheer focus of just getting this one task done, then moving to another and getting that done. Again, some of these may not resonate with you, but pick yes if any of them do. Yeah, it does. I would say it does. Avoiding tasks requires sustained mental effort. You struggle to finish things that require a lot of concentration over a long period of time. Even things you enjoy, yet other times you get in the zone and hyper-focus. Do you avoid routine tasks that feel monotonous, repetitive, and boring? Dread paperwork. When fast and important tasks to do, do you wilt and put it off? Do you, you'll do a dozen small tasks instead. Load a laundry, dishes, surf online, and then I'll... Yes, this happens all the time without the ADD meds, especially when I was in school. I'd get distracted and try to come up with every possible thing I could do other than homework and projects. It... I know some... some people could use it as the... Uh, like where they're actively going out of their way to do it, but for me at least, it was completely subconscious. I had... Not to say I didn't know what I was doing in terms of like, oh, I know I have to get X, Y, and Z done. It was more of like, it never even crossed my mind that I still had to work on X, Y, and Z. It was like, oh, look, I should do this, or I wonder how this is going, and it, it can really stack up on you quite a bit. Yes. Frequently misplace or lose things you need. You cannot find your phone, your keys, purse, or glasses. You often misplace a TV remote, your phone, or a tool. I had it in my hand a minute ago. Yeah. <laughs> I have. I joke around that I have a ghost that likes to steal my stuff. I joke around about that because I've often had things where I swear to God I've had it on this counter and then the like five minutes later I come back and it's not there. And it'll t I'll search the house, tear everything off the ground, looking for it, and I won't find it for another three days, and then suddenly it appears somewhere completely different that I'd have no memory of ever being around there with that thing. Uh, one example of this would be I had my cell phone, uh, what was it, last year, the year before, on the... Uh, dinner table and I had what did I do I think I went and I talked to my mom about something and I came back and the phone was gone and we were looking for it trying to call it and it somehow ended up all the way by the fireplace it wasn't in the fireplace nor was it near anywhere where the embers or something could have got it but it was right next to the fireplace essentially and I had sat there at one point, but I was pretty sure that I had this phone with me right before I talked to my mom. So that's an example. Um, I don't think I lose stuff as much as probably what it's trying to imply. Probably because I'm pretty organized already. So I don't think this... Your home and your office are cluttered. Things have to be out where you can see them, otherwise you'll forget you have them. The piles of earth piles everywhere to remind you. Yeah. Sometimes. 
because I like my room and the house being super clean. I don't like it being super messy, but I do understand the logic of wanting to have everything out so that way you won't forget because I'm sure I've done that before at some points and then you'll just get distracted and totally forget they're even there. So, uh, yeah, I guess. Does your attention get pulled away by noises outside your window, conversations, or something happening across the room? You're often distracted by your own thoughts or conversation. You can zone out, lost in thought, imagining situations or conversations. You may be smart, but a bit absent-minded, a daydreamer. Yes, it actually just happened right now. My phone just lit up from a text, and I had to physically force myself to keep reading that, those lines. <laughs> so, for the sake of the video, I'm not going to look at it. But that was the very first thing I had to do, or that my mind wanted to do, was immediately stop the video and stare straight at the phone. Um, I've de I definitely get easily distracted by stuff. Um, at work... Well, the place where I work is really lax with a lot of stuff, so I'm allowed to have my headphones in and listen to my iPod, whatever. And that's usually what I have to use on top of the meds to help me focus and just get stuff done. Because that drowns out all the noise that can come from anywhere around me. Um, you know, thoughts or conversations. Yeah, you zone out, lost in thought. Imagining situations or conversations. Yeah, that's happened quite a bit. Uh, yes, that happens. Forgetful. You often lose track of what you're supposed to be doing. Forget what you've already done. You often forget to pack something and have to go back. You're terrible with names. Yeah. <laughs> this is pretty definitive so far. <laughs> you forget to pack something and have to go back. You're terrible with names. You forget or lose track of deadlines, appointments, and promises. Yeah. That's why I have to write it down. Or I'm gonna forget. <laughs> when you're alone, you talk talk out loud to yourself to stay on track. Yeah. <laughs> Sticky notes everywhere? No, not, no, not really. Perhaps you've bought something and then realized you already own one. Or several. Yeah. <laughs> Do any of these ring a bell? Yep. Oh. And the nine uh, inattention symptoms. Then that's the nine inattention symptoms. You've finished part one. Your total score is nine out of nine. A score of five or higher suggests inattention is a problem for you. When most people struggle with some of these symptoms, that doesn't mean they have ADHD. They could be stressed by major life events or any number of medical issues, but your score suggests that a full assessment by a specialist who understands ADHD might be in order. About four to five percent of adults are struggling with focus, distraction, and inattention. These, despite or these challenges undermine their goals and good intentions in many areas of life, despite all their best efforts. Now let's look at the hyperactivity and impulse... Impulse... Damn, I can't read that. Impulsivity questions. Or problem areas for many adults with ADD and see what we can learn. Go to part two. So I'm sorry ahead of time that this video seems long. I just thought that doing this video was kind of important. You probably don't bounce around like a hyperactive child, but perhaps you often feel restless, driven, like there's a dynamo inside you. Maybe you're impatient, on the go. Thoughts race, sometimes tumbling, ricocheting as you pour out one idea after the other. You may crave excitement and try new things, or love highly stimulating activities with a big payoff. Let's do part two. Physically restless and fidgety. Do you grow fidgety during meetings, classes, or church? Do you you even become angsty or er, angsty antsy during long conversations. Do you fidget with keys, bracelets, coins, and pens, twirl your hair, doodle, think do these things help you focus and listen? Yes. You guys probably have noticed in some of the videos, I twist my hair a lot. My hair, for example, I'm hopefully this is on camera. This whole area right here used to have hair. When I started college, I actually remember the first time I just started twisting hair. And I would just twist them into knots and then try to untwist them. And over 
just doing this constantly, the hair started thinning and thinning and thinning. And so now it's, this whole area is kind of blank. Um, I still twist hair in my arms, neck sometimes. Uh, yeah, doodling was a very big problem in middle school and high school. I literally have notebooks that are just covered in doodles. I didn't take my ADD meds for two and a half years of high school because I hated the feeling of being this emotionless robot when I took the meds. The meds I'm taking right now don't have that problem. But then that also makes it a lot harder for me to tell if they're working or not because that because when that those feelings kicked in, you could it's hard to describe for someone who's not who's never taken the meds, but you can physically you can physically feel the your mind switch over when the meds kick in. It's really weird. Do you tap your foot or bounce the leg with, with pe your pent up energy, constantly shifting in your seat, rocking, tilting your chair way back when you're thinking? Yeah. <laughs> Do that too. Do you feel the need to get up and move? Do you pace while you're on the phone? Wish you could pace during meetings. Do you walk faster than others and have to wait for them? Like to be in action on the move? Yes. I pace all the time when I'm brushing my teeth, and I don't know why. I just have this big urge to go walking around and brush as I'm brushing my teeth. I've walked into the bedroom, I've walked into the living room and just sat or just walked around the living room watching the TV as I'm brushing my teeth. Um, I don't. If some of you guys have ever seen me in person, I have a very fast walking pace. And to me, it's completely natural. I have to physically force myself to slow down. So that way most people can walk or catch up, really. And it's not like I'm trying to brag about it. It's just a thing that's completely natural. I have, it never crosses my mind that I'm going fast or that, uh, yeah, like right now I just lost my train of thought because I had two thoughts just come in at the same time and just completely cut me off. When you're required to sit, sit and do something challenging like financial paperwork, do you need to take frequent breaks to shake off your agitation? Yeah, sometimes. Restless. Are you impatient or agitated when things are quiet? Do you feel rushed, pressured, or driven even doing something that isn't urgent? No, actually, I don't. I don't get impatient or agitated when things are quiet. I actually kind of prefer when stuff is quiet because I kind of grew up in a house that was super loud all the time. So just having loud noises everywhere is really irritating. If you have... Have you had frequent job changes or moved frequently? I've had frequent job changes, but they were never of my own choice. So, n not all these, if any of them do. No, this is the first, I think this is the first no we've had. Difficulty enjoying leisure activities quietly. Do you find it hard to relax or work quietly? Small talk is boring. Uh, you always have to be trying new things or changing them up. Uh, that's kind of hard to answer because I'm on top of the ADD. I'm very, very introverted, so I almost never, of my own volition, will talk to anyone. On my or like, I'll never talk to. Like, if I'm in a group of people, I'll just keep to myself and maybe people watch or something. But normally, it's other people that have to start the conversation before I'll kind of get it going. Um, I don't mind small talk, but it does get irritating after a while. But... If you're using small talk as a way to build up a conversation so it one starts, that has that doesn't bug me at all. You're always pushing the envelope, tweaking and adjusting. What if we do it this way instead? Do you find yourself stirring things up, teasing? You often draw attention to yourself. 
You can be over the top, center of attention. Some would say you're a bit immature or prone to drama. Everything's a big deal with you. No. I absolutely 100% hate being the center of attention. I hate it. I hate it. I hate the idea of people just staring and watching me. Well, this is a bit ironic, being that this is going in a video onto YouTube. <laughs> But in, like, a class or something, I hate being the center of attention. I can't, I bear, I have to find a way to not, uh, how do I word this? Because part of it, I guess, could go with stage fright or fear of speaking in public or something. But yeah, I do not like being the center of attention at all. I like, I prefer to be just the wallflower that doesn't do anything but watch and kind of listen in every once in a while. So, no. No, no, no. Always on the go or driven. Does it often seem like you're always on the go or driven by a motor? Are you drawn to one hobby or s obsession after another? Yeah! <laughs> There's quite a few things that... that are hobbies of mine that I will jump to all the time. For example, YouTube and Facebook. Facebook pages I run, and I've worked on trying to make video games, and uh, looked into voice acting stuff, which is still kind of what I want, is one of the main things I'd love to do, is voice acting for, like, either Funimation or Shonen Jump, or like, what is it, Viz Media, I think? But that's, that's an example, like, one of the things that I wanted to go into college for, Beginning of high school was interior design. Not a lot of people would have thought that, but, but the thing that I actually ended up getting a degree in is history. I actually have my four-year degree in history. You have more stamina and enthousiasm, enthusiasm than, any, than anyone else if it's something you find interesting. You dive in whole hog like a whirling dervish with tons of energy. And then suddenly crash. More of a sprinter than a marathoner. Yeah, I. It's not to say that I lose interest in something and don't want to do it. It's more like, okay, I'm burned out on that one thing. Just give it like a week or something, and then it might. Then I'll get the interest again or something. So yeah, that's true. Not rude, but talkative. You always have lots to say. But you're not so great at listening. You can be an enthusiastic chatterbox, but you just can't stop. So what else tries to sp tries to speak? Do you get louder because you've the pressure to get it out? Uh, I only try to speak louder if someone cut me off. I again with the whole I hate being cut off in conversations. It is one of my main pet peeves. I hate it. And then that always leads, like I said before, to me trying to get my point across, most likely because I know I'll forget what I was going to say. And then that has kind of gotten me in trouble because then people complain about, oh, we already heard you, even though no one bothered to respond or like the person, the person cuts me off. And so I'm, I have the natural assumption that no one bothered to or no one heard me do you tend to dominate conversations telling great stories but rarely learning anything about anyone else you always have to top or match someone else's story no again I don't like being the center of attention I prefer to just back off and and just listen to everyone else I don't mind participating in conversations like if it's with my friends and we're talking about like video games or anime or or whatever but I don't dominate it dominate the conversations so no not really no congrats you've completed the questions on hyperactivity just three more to go exploring impulsivity blurting out are you full of ideas your mind jumps and races ahead you don't sit quietly and consider but immediately offer one idea or opinion after another uh, you may seem impatient or dominating, always adding your two cents, having to contribute your ideas. And you have lots of them. You're instantly enthusiastic and interested in new challenges. 
You say yes to everything and then end up overwhelmed with commitments. Uh, yeah? I guess, I, like in a conversation or a classroom, I won't blurt out whatever's on my mind. But, yeah, I, I have pretty speeding thoughts if I'm not on medication. And it totally feels like you're like your mind's going a million miles an hour, and you can't focus on any one thought long enough for it to even register. Like you'll completely forget what the heck you were just thinking about because another thought has come into your head or some distraction has happened. And if you're in school, this is really bad. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to write stuff down for homework or something. So yes, this does happen, but I don't blurt out. I'm not impatient or dominating, no. Waiting your turn is frustrating. Hate lineups or waiting for other people to arrive? No, I just prefer being punctual. I don't like to keep people, I don't like to be late and keep people waiting. You will move from one checkout line to another seeking the fastest cashier. No, not really. You'll go out of your way to avoid slow traffic or long conversations. Uh, as far as the checkout line, no. Long conversations, that's a bit harder to answer. Again, with the introvert, the, the being a big introvert, uh, it depends on the person when it comes to the conversation because conversations because some people are a lot more taxing to be around and they kind of wear down me mentally and physically it just wears me down being around them not to it not I don't want it to seem like that's being rude or something it's nothing against them it's just like each person is different in how much they kind of tax you or tax me, I guess. Can't stand people who speak slowly. Is small talk painfully boring? No, not really. A friend who asks the waitress about every item, every item on the menu makes you crazy. Yes, that does make me crazy. Do you hate waiting in line for other people, or do you hate waiting for other people to arrive? You just can't sit back and relax. Mm. Yeah, I guess. I'll mess with my phone or twiddle my fingers or something, just trying to burn the time away until they arrive. So yeah, I guess. Do you interrupt or intrude on others? Do you interrupt, chime in, or intrude on, into other people's conversations? Nope. Do you feel the need to top someone's story or add your two cents? Do you always have an opinion or an idea you feel the need to share? And yes, they may well be great ideas. Nope. <laughs> I've already gone over that. Five out of nine. For the hyper for hyperactivity impulsivity, this threat the threshold score is five or more, and you score your score suggests hyperactivity and impulsivity may be issues for you. Since you scored five or more in part one, this suggests you may have what's called a predominantly combined subtype of ADHD. This is the most common type of ADHD. So where do you go from here? Oh, is that it? Oh, I guess that's it. Um. Yeah, because it just says explore resources and... Is it loading? Okay, yeah, it's just... Okay, so I this is where I'm going to end the video. Um, I'm sorry if it seemed boring to some of you guys. I hope this has been helpful or insightful to some of you who have thought, th thought that you guys might have had ADD or ADHD. I don't see why people combine the two, but whatever. Um, I decided to do this video because ADD is a really big part of my life. Not by choice, but it does an impact a lot of what I do and what I'm able to do realistically. And it affects a whole lot of my life, whether I want it to or not. So if this video is able to help you guys in any way come up with 
uh, or just to be able to help you decide whether if you think maybe you should go see a doctor about it, getting professionally diagnosed or not. I hope this video has helped. So I think I'll leave it here for today. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you thought of today's video. And please leave any suggestions down below in the comments of games you'd like to see me play later in the future. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you, and bye bye